My name is Bob McGoy. Um, I'm going to be your host today. Just to let everybody know where this presentation is coming from, I'm doing, along with Brian Pollock, some a couple of Wars World presentations this year, February, in Dallas. And they're on achieving extreme performance inside of SOLIDWORKS. And before we started with what hardware we were going to change, what settings inside of SOLIDWORKS, what files we were going to test, we also want to discuss what the Windows environment is going to be like. So here, what I'm going to go through is some of the things that we discuss on the side of having a new computer, but most of this is having to do with computers that you have existing. So right now, I'm running on a three-year-old machine where a lot of the things that I'm discussing today are probably things that I need to do myself. So we're, we're going to go through some of these and we'll talk about them. So the first thing, as we use our computers over time, we install lots of apps. We install lots of programs. And what we want to be able to do is control when those things fire up. And many times they're firing up on startup and we don't realize it. So before Windows 10 came out, how you would execute that is you would go to the start menu, you hit the run button, and you type in MS commit, config. And it would bring up the MS config dialog box here, and you'd go to the startup, and you'd see all the different tools that you had going at startup. With Windows 10, when you go to that startup tab now, if I go in here and I go run, and I go MS config, It'll bring up my MS config window, just like you see in my PowerPoint. But if I go to startup, it says manage the startup options are actually in task manager. So it's got moved in Windows 10. Now, I can't show a control alt delete inside of WebEx, but I can show you another way to get to that. So if we go to the start bar here, we right click on the clock, we can say task manager, and that will bring up the task manager here. So you can see we got our running processes here. You can see all the different tools I'm using currently. If I come up here, I can go to startup, and I can see every application that is running on my computer at startup that may be enabled or disabled. You can see I've already disabled a few. So like maybe Skype, OneNote, maybe I'll say disable that on startup. I'll go through this and talk about things in my head. What do I not use that's actually in a startup option? And turn those off. It'll make my windows load up faster, and it won't take as many resources. So definitely something that we all need to be aware of. So like I said there, Windows 10, you can get to it from Control-Alt-Delete or right click on the clock, go to Task Manager, and you're gonna go to the Startup tab. So once you're there, you evaluate what you've got, and do I really need that running all the time behind the scenes? Probably not, so. Freeing up hard drive space. This is something near and dear to my heart because if you look at my hard drives right now, I am not in good shape. So I'm gonna go through a couple ways of freeing up hard drive space so we can talk about this. So one is just going to Windows Explorer, right-clicking on your C drive, and selecting properties. And from there, you'll actually see on your hard drive a disk cleanup. From there, you can go through, and there's even a system cleanup option. So let's, let's go ahead and look at that. Bring up Windows Explorer here. You see I got quite a bit of stuff going on. I'll click on my computer here. And you see, oh gosh, my E drive's not in very good shape. My C drive's getting a little, little out of shape here too. So what I can do, right click on my C drive and I go to properties. And just like that screenshot there, you can see I've got a disk cleanup option. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. It does a little summary and says, currently with what I've got selected, I can free up two gigs off my hard drive. That sounds pretty awesome. I would love to have that. Now, going further, there's actually a clean up my system files button. Let's dig into that. And that's going to do a further calculation on my C drive and see what else we can purge. So you can see right here is telling me if I go with what I can get rid of, it says 3.5 gigs of my hard drive. Well, I only have a 256 hard drive. That, that would be nice to have back. So you can see my recycle bin, that's a gig. 
Um, I've got almost a gig of Windows log files. Do I really need those? Windows update cleanup files? No, I don't need those. So I'm just going to come through here and, and blow some of these out. Windows temporary files, I can blow those away as well. Go ahead and hit OK. Delete those files. And as Murphy's Law dictates, my computer is no longer going to boot. So just, just kidding. Oh, um, got a good one there. Uh, Control Shift Escape is also brings up Task Manager. That's that's a good one. Let me try that. Control Shift Escape. Awesome. Thank you very much. That's a, that's a good one. Always always learning something on these webcasts. It's amazing. So let's go in through and deleting some of those. So I'm going to go ahead and let it do its thing. Another tool is called Winderstat. Absolutely love this this device. Um, this app allows me to see the hard drive or the hard drives and show me what percentage of each folders are taking up the most of my hard drive space, and allowing me to visually see how it's taking up the hard drive space of my hard drive. So that's a window stat. That's a really good good tool to use. Now another one that's kind of baked in there. Let me back up one there. There we go. Is Solar RX. Solaris RX also has some system maintenance tools that you may not have known about. So I manually went to the system and told it to get rid of some Windows temporary files and things like that. But with Solaris RX, you can come in and you can tell it to do a maintenance on these folders. And when I say start maintenance, it asks me, when do I want to do these? I say, why not weekly go go in and clean out my solace temporary files, my internet temporary files, my my Windows temporary files. Go ahead and close those, get those out of there once a week. It'll actually schedule a Windows task to do that. So something that's really nice there. That's actually in Solar's RX. This one I've spoken about for years. Visual effects under system advanced system settings. So let's let's take a look at this one. This basically controls how Windows looks and feels. So typically, if something makes Windows look amazing and beautiful and pretty, it usually affects performance. So what we'll do is we're going to come in here, and I'm going to type in system, go to system here, brings up system information. And seems that we're on the, the hot key fix today, if you have a keyboard that has the break button on it, you can hold down the Windows key on your keyboard and hit the break button, and it also brings up system information. I think that's funny because you're actually saying break Windows, and it brings up the system information. So here, I'm going to go into advanced system settings, and this brings up system settings. This has been here since, I think, what, Windows 95. Now, I come in here, and you can see I've got a performance button. I've got a user setting profiles. We're going to go to the Performance Settings button here. And before we get to the visual effects, there's one thing I want you to be aware of. I've seen this happen a couple times on some of our customer machines. On this Advanced tab, there might be an option set here for background services to take precedence over programs. If that is the case, you definitely want to have somebody do a malware inspection on your computer and an antivirus inspection on your computer because you probably are mining bitcoins. I know that probably sounds kind of crazy and kind of scary, but when I've seen the malware that does bitcoin mining, it usually has this setting turned on there. So it still allows you to use some of the programs, but the background services are what's taking precedence and your system is suffering for it. So visual effects, so this is what makes Windows look pretty. It's your, your transparent toolbars, your pretty icons on your desktop. It says, let Windows choose what is best for my computer, and it turns almost everything on. It says, let me see what it looks like when I say best appearance. It turns everything on. If I say adjust for best performance, watch what happens. It turns everything off. Okay? So... I don't like the idea of Windows choosing what is best for my computer, and apparently performance versus appearance are totally drastically different things. So I usually go with adjust for best performance, and you'd be surprised. You get a little bit of graphics performance out of that when you set that back. So just something to be aware of. Now, if you're like me, this is actually a 
I hate to say this, but this is actually off of my machine. I need need to it says I have 19,000 problems I need to address in my registry. So this is a tool called I'm not even going to pronounce it. Um, it's I believe it's a German company. Um, it's a registry cleaner, and what it does is it looks at everything in your registry and looks for things that are performance severity, low, high, medium, normal, and it suggests fixes to those problems, which I strongly recommend you do. Um, you can use tools like this. You can use CC Cleaner. There's a, a couple of tools out of there. Now, this window is an application that you have to download. So it is. This is a free tool. Um, I strongly recommend this one. It's it's been a good tool for like the last couple of years for me. Um, usually when I get done running this application, I get get some speed up on my startup of Windows and things seem to run a little bit smoother. So just something to think about there. Power management. This is one a lot of people don't think about, especially if you're running a laptop. I'm running a laptop myself. I've gone through this and configured the living crud out of it. But when you get a laptop, immediately it assumes that you are going to conserve power. And even if you have a workstation, sometimes they are going to assume that you're either going to take a balanced approach, you're going to cons conserve power, and they are going to underclock things when this happens. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how we get into this. So I'm going to go to my start and I'm going to type in control panel. So I've got my control panel up here. I'm going to bring up my larger icon so we can see that a little better. And I'm going to go to power options. Under power options right now, it's telling me that I'm running the balanced configuration. For some reason, the version of Win the installed windows that I have is only allowing me to have two custom power settings. And I've customized the balanced one. It's not balanced anymore but I have one set for recordings as well. So what I'm going to do to make this change, I'm going to go to Change Plan Settings. And you can see on the left what happens if I'm on battery. Within five minutes, my display is going to turn off. Um, after 20 minutes, my computer is going to go to sleep. If I am plugged in, it will do neither, neither of those. So that's just the tip of the iceberg. What we want to do is we want to go into change advanced power settings. Here's where the pavement hits the road. So you can see right here, turn off your hard disk. So if I, if I expand this hard disk, if I'm on battery, it stops the spinning of the hard disk or access to the, the hard drive after 10 minutes of just sitting there doing nothing. One of the things I also want to look at is sleep. Do I want the, my computer to go to sleep? If I'm in the middle of doing something and I walk away from it, is it going to go to sleep? Well, I set mine to never. So I change, if I'm plugged in, I set that to zero. Zero will change to never. So if I say 15 minutes, you see after 15 minutes of being plugged in, it's going to go to sleep. If I set that to zero, lo and behold, it goes to never. Okay. So here, I'm going to come in and hybrid sleep. I don't do hybrid sleeping, and I don't do hybrid after a certain bit there. That's completely up to you. If you want your, P your PC to go to sleep, that's fine. Um, I usually don't because I want to be able to get right back to it immediately if I walk away for a 20-minute, 30-minute meeting. I don't want to have to wait for it to wake up. I want it to be ready to go. So. Another thing here, probably the most important to me is going to be the processor power management, okay? Minimum processor speed, okay? Most workstations should be set to 100. I have seen lately some Dell machines and some HP machines that are workstations that are set to like 75. So they're actually kind of underclocking which we don't want it to do that. So if I want I want 100% all the time as my minimum when I'm plugged in, I set it to 100%. My cooling, well, 
if I'm on battery, passive may not be too bad. Um, if I'm plugged in and I'm going 100%, maybe I should be going active. Now, my laptop has some pretty decent fans, so it's going to swirl up quite a bit. Now, the maximum processor state is the most important here. You can see, if I'm not plugged in, I'm always running at least 5% of the capability of the processor, and my on battery, maximum is going to do 25%. So that means I'm only going to get 1 gigahertz speed on this processor to conserve battery life. So that's completely up to you, but you can change that. That option's right there. Now, a way that you can see what's going on is if you go to Task Manager, and you go to Performance, and you click on CPU, you're going to see your processor speed. So I would unplug my power right now, but I'm afraid of what might happen <laughs> during the WebEx. I don't want to do that to you guys. I don't want to lose everybody. So, but I will be able to see under performance CPU, if I'm not plugged in, I'll be running at one gigahertz at max. So that's something we want to be aware of. Power management settings, always check that on your computers. Always go to that tool. You'd be surprised how many things are not set up the way they should be for maximum performance. Okay, so for this is always going back to laptops. I'm, I'm sorry, I've got to focus on laptops today. Um, disable video card switching. Almost every computer as engineers, we're running either the higher end NVIDIA cards or running the higher end AMD chipsets. And what they do is to conserve power, they will put an Intel HT, HD graphics chipset in there. And they will also put in our NVIDIA card. And to try to help us out, they will make it so the laptop will try to figure out when to switch back and forth between the video card and, uh, on AMD or the NVIDIA card to the Intel card. Sometimes it does a good job, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it falls flat on its face and we have instabilities. There are certain tools that just don't like it at all. So I recommend doing this at a BIOS level. You can do it in the NVIDIA control panel, but I've seen where it still has problems even after you do that. So I do it at a BIOS level. So when you boot your computer, you either hit F2 or delete. It'll bring you in the BIOS screen, and you're going to look for things like Optimus, or you're going to look for video card switchable graphics fixed versus dynamic. If you have that option, you're going to pick fixed. You don't want the dynamic switching back and forth. You might have the option of integrated, discrete, or switchable graphics. Switchable graphics would switch between the Intel integrated graphics chipset, which would be the top one, and the discrete, which would be the NVIDIA chipset under the discrete level. So those are things that we want to be aware of. Unfortunately, I apologize. Um, Many times when you're working in BIOS, you can't take a screenshot. So I had to take photographs of people's laptops when I did this one. So just be aware of that. I'm not sure about you guys, but when I work in the office, every so often I will have to reboot. It's like, wait a second, I didn't agree to that. And what happens sometimes in Windows, the active hours that you work is actually set in Windows. Microsoft will not install or update without asking you while you're in this time frame. You can change it to a maximum of 18 hours. So if you go to the Start button and you go to Settings in Windows 10 here, Let's see, it's under, it's under Updates and Security. And you, under Windows Update, you can say Change Active Hours. So you could say, I'm active on this machine from 6 a.m. until 6 p.m. And Windows will not reboot for an update or install an update while you're in those active hours 
unless they ask you. You then tell them to dismiss. If it does come up in that time, you get the option to dismiss it. But you'd be surprised if you if this happens while you're working and you don't have active hours set, it will slow down your system quite a bit because it's installing the updates in the background. And that's something we don't want to happen. So, so that's called active hours inside of Windows Update. Okay, resetting your device. And I'm not talking about resetting our iPad or resetting our phone. I'm talking about resetting our computer. Yes, that sounds very scary, okay? But it's not Michael Myers scary. It's more like the Wayans Brothers scary movie scary, okay? So how this works, how the scary thing happens is we go back to that same window. So we're going to go back to settings here. And we're going to go to security and update. And there's a recovery area. And you can say, I'd like to reset this PC. I'm going to click Get Started here, but I'm not going to go any further than this. It gives me the option to keep my files, remove apps and settings, and just keep my personal information. Or I can remove everything, my personal information, my apps and settings. Basically, this is giving you a which way book for how you want to reset your system. Okay? So I'm going to back out of this for a second. So you go through, you tell it you want to start up, you tell it, do I want to keep everything, do I want to remove everything, and you're like, Bob, why would I do this? Well, as you start working inside of Windows for a long time on your computer, your registry gets clogged up. You get, com you get applications that are removed or added, and things just start getting more and more messy. At a certain point, you just have to start with a clean canvas. So here... Now, what I like about it is you can say, I want to keep my files. And you can say, I just want to clear out my Windows profile. Just cleaning out your Windows profile can make your computer run so much faster because you're getting a whole brand new set of registry keys. It's getting rid of all that extra bloat that's in your My Documents and things like that that get installed when we install apps as ourselves. And it makes life a lot easier. Now, you can go through the option of removing the files completely and starting over with a clean slate of Windows, and it will run really fast, but it will take a while. It may take a few hours. This probably take you about maybe 15, 20 minutes, and you, all you have to do is log back in to the system. I believe it doesn't even take your computer off the domain because the, com the domain adding is... Um, part of the local admin, not part of your user. So something to think about. Talk to your IT guy about it. Um, my guy, Gary Kravitz, does it all the time for, for redoing computers. So like I said, once you get to this warning screen right here and you hit next, it's pretty much this is the end of the which way book. It's going to go ahead and do what you requested. Now, with that being said, it's pretty much a wizard. And... In my opinion, it's really not that scary as long as you've got the data off that you want. It's more like um, my, my two-year-old when I took her to the pumpkin festival. It's really not that scary. Okay. So the next thing here, checking for malware. A lot of IT groups are getting really good at making sure that they're not getting infiltration um, they're not getting uh, viruses and things like that, but sometimes malware gets missed, and that happens by us going to websites, doing research on projects, um, looking for images on Google Images. We might click on the wrong thing, and it takes us to the wrong website because we're just trying to find an image of that competitive product. Those usually don't become viruses. They're, they're malwares. They get installed into our browsers. They get installed into our My Documents. My favorite is malware bytes. Um, a couple of other good ones are at aware. Um, Hijack this is a really great tool for figuring out if you've if you've got some malware as well. Um, there's a great community for uploading those files. I strongly recommend having one of these at your disposal at any get, given time. I like malware bytes and Hijack this for the mere fact that you can have them as portable 
executables on your flash drive, plug them into a machine, run them, and you don't have to worry about having a lot of overhead. It doesn't install anything. Okay. This one's been around for a while, but I still love to share this with people. If you've been processing something in this situation, I've got a complex sheet metal part inside of SOLIDWORKS, and I tell it to update costing on that, and I get a little impatient and I get click happy. You can see all of a sudden the screen whites out. Okay, I'm going to look at the chat here for a second. Is there any way to maximize performance essential on rendering machines? Um, for that one, uh, Jeff, on configuring your rendering machine, go ahead and drop me your email address and I will um, talk to you about that one afterwards. Okay? That, that one's a little bit more specific to just um, what you're doing with rendering, so I'll, I'll get to you on that one. Send, send me your email address in the chat. So, okay, so like I said, you get click happy and all of a sudden SOLIDWORKS whites out. SOLIDWORKS is still doing something behind the scenes. It's not SOLIDWORKS that's doing this, it's Windows. There's a tool inside of Windows, it's called Hung App Timeout. And in Windows, what was it? I think, was it 7 and 95 and was it ME and those, those versions? This was an internal number that was set to three minutes. And what it says is if a program does not return a value back to Windows within three minutes, I'm going to consider it not to be responding. And it will make it milky white. And if you continue to click on it, it will ask me, do you want me to close the program? Sure, go ahead. I think it crashed. Actually, it probably did not crash. A new thing they added in SOWERS 2019 if, you, if that happens and it pops up, SOLIDWORKS actually gives you information now and says, hey, we're still doing stuff. Don't click any further. So the way you counteract this is you go into the Windows registry, you go to H key current user, you go to control panel, and you go to desktop. So let's, let's look at that. So to run regedit, you go to the start menu, type in regedit. If you don't have, if you have user account controls enabled, you might have to say, yep, I do, I have to say yes. So now I've got my Windows registry up and it's under H key current user. So this is every user logging in is gonna have a different setting here. So, so we're gonna go to H key current user, control panel, desktop. I don't believe I have assigned mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to type in string, I'm going to do a string value, and it's going to be hung app timeout. The value is in milliseconds. So the default for Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8 is five seconds, 5,000 milliseconds. I'm gonna set that back to three minutes. So 180,000 milliseconds would be three minutes. So now, if a program were to lag for a moment and I click on it again, it's not gonna go milky white on me. A lot of people have that problem. So, if you're taking notes, here's here's the a little bit more summary information on how to do that. I think this come comes up pretty nice. So I'll leave this up on screen for a second if anybody's taking any notes. So I got I got a few more things here I want to show you. Have you ever seen the Windows pop-up in, in the bottom right-hand corner, it says, warning, Windows resources are critically low, SOLIDWORKS cannot open any more windows, um, close some documents. If you said critically low application resources, 
You can see that. Depleted applications, resources. These all have to do with one particular setting. They have to do with um, GDIs. So many times we, we don't take in consideration everything that Windows does for us behind the scenes. Many times we think about, well, I've got plenty of hard drive space. I've got plenty of physical memory, which would be RAM. I've got plenty of paging file. But there's two other things that are involved in Windows that we don't really think about too much. One is desktop heap, which is the OS memory reserved for user objects, like windows, menus, cursors, icons, keyboard shortcuts, that sort of thing. And then there's GDI objects. These are resources that support graphics, fonts, bitmaps, brushes, pins, um, drawing surfaces. Those are GDIs, okay? So those are things we have to take in consideration. So if you have those, those errors come up, these are registry keys that you should change. Their default is 10,000 um, user um, handles and um, 10,000 GDI handles. We usually recommend setting them to 30,000. Um, solvers can't change that when they do the installs, but we have found that by changing this, you get, a, get rid of a lot of those. Typically, this happens when you're running SOLIDWORKS for an extremely long time and you're opening files, closing files, opening cl files, closing files. Over time, it has a buildup, okay? So if you want to know more about this topic, I created a Google link here to an article by the developers at SOLIDWORKS. So it's goo.gl, which is a shortened Google address, lowercase u, d, r, uppercase D, K, uppercase K. That will take you to this nice little knowledge base article. I love this article. I share this with everybody. It walks you through why are GDIs important, what do they do mathematically. You can see there's quite a bit of information in here, and it shows you how to change the GDIs as well. So if you need step-by-step -step instructions to share with IT, this is a great document to share with them. So highly recommend this one. Okay, one hardware thing, and then I'm going to cut you off because I've already gone, what, five minutes past my thing. So when I'm doing hardware testing, the first thing I ask for are some new hard drives. So a few years back, we were using these type of hard drives. We were using spinner drives. So you can see on the right, we've got a laptop spinner drive, which is two and a half inch, inch drive. And on the, the left, you've got a three and a half inch drive. Those are running off of a SATA controller. They're spinning devices. They, they have platters. They're based upon benchmark speeds that I've seen and I've run through multiple tests. Usually read speeds are around the 100 megabytes per second range, and the write speeds are around 100 megabytes per second range. That's pretty decent, but we step up to the next range of technology, which would be solid state drives that are also going through a SATA controller. At max, absolutely at max that I've seen is around 550 megs read and write speed on these drives. Some people say they can do up to 600. I have yet to see it on at least 10 or 12 machines that I've tried. So very, very nice thing to have. Now, there's a newer tech out there than this that is extremely fast compared to this. It's called an, some people call it an M.2 drive. Some people call it an NVE, I mean NVMe drive. What this does, it's a, it's a solid state drive that plugs into an express, um, PCI Express slot in the motherboard of your laptop or your workstation. The amazing clock speed here is, on the read speeds, is over 3,000 megabytes, three gigs per second. Write speeds at a gig and a half per second. I mean, you think about that, in about, what, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 seconds, you can basically write a whole Blu-ray to this device. So it's pretty impressive how much faster it is. 
Now, we may not be able to take advantage of all that speed, but by having this sort of drive, we are assured that our hard drive is no longer going to be the bottleneck of any problems we might have on our system. That allows us to focus on other things. So now, if you are not fortunate enough to have a PCIe M.2 drive, it's called an M.2 slot, on either the motherboard of your laptop or your workstation, there is an alternative. There are these things called Revo drives. Um, this one's from um, OCX, I mean OCZ. Um, it plugs into the express bridge of your workstation. So where you plug your video cards into, it plugs right into that and it acts like a hard drive and runs at the same speeds as the M.2 drives. So just want to be aware of that. So now, if you like this sort of information, um, we're doing quite a bit of hardware testing right now. I've got boxes of video cards behind me from NVIDIA. I've got some box workstations sitting in my office. We're going to be delivering that data at SOLIDWORKS World. I'm going to be delivering some preliminary data in another webcast coming soon um, where we're going to be talking about graphics and differences between 2018 and 2019. So with that being said, does anyone else have any questions? If you have any questions, shoot me an email. It's bobm at CETI.com. If I don't have an answer for you, I will get the question and divert it to the right person. Question about best video card. Ooh, that's a tough one. It really does depend on what you're doing. If you're running SOLIDWORKS 2018, a P4000 Quadro is probably your best bet right now. So a NVIDIA Quadro P4000. SOLIDWORKS 2018 and back are not going to take advantage of anything over a 4000 level graphics card. Now, with SOLIDWORKS 2019, we changed the graphics engine. So we're actually supporting um, OpenGL 4.5. So you're going to be able to leverage the 5000 and the 6000 level graphics card, and you're going to be able to see a responsiveness that is considerably better than the previous gens. So hopefully that answers your question on best video card. Thank you, Scotty. I appreciate that best presentation so far. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. That makes me want to continue doing some great work for you guys. Running FEA CFD flow. I will be doing some testing on CFD and flow, um, probably some plastics as well. Um, I've got to get this first round of testing done first, and I'm going to go back and visit rendering and FEA analysis in general. So once again, Everybody, thank you very much for your time. Sorry I ran over a little bit. I get really passionate about this stuff. It's really fun to share with you guys information that we have. So um, with that being said, I'd like to thank you for, for spending time with me. And um, we've got some more webcasts coming. We've got 12 more of these going tomorrow and all next week. So once again, thank you. Have a great afternoon. Um, keep designing.